Well, welcome to the chaos that is performance reviews. I've got um, some Beam uh, Serenity heads, which are really a Visselwerk EBK 340s. If you're not familiar with Visselwerk, they are the German company who designed and made these, and they make a lot of high-end attachments for a whole bunch of stuff. Um, this one's got a clamp on it, but you can see they basically they made a direct connect model and a pigtail model. So we're going to go through and see if I can't just make uh, one of these work uh, for as a direct connect and hopefully one more work as a pigtail model as I have a very interesting vacuum I would love to throw one of these nozzles on the end and show you. Um, I'll give you a hint it's made by Orc if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. Let your imagination run wild. So let's see, uh, brush roller shot on that one. Brush roller's great on that one. And brush roller's great on that one. So we got one good brush roller out of the bunch. It's odd, we have Phillips screws in some of these. They stopped using Phillips screws in the early 2000s. Well, I'll show you the Vissel work symbol if you guys are not familiar. There it is. Right there. So, for those. Oh, it even says EBK340 on the bottom. They didn't really try to hide it from the. They were just a rebranding. And a lot of companies do this with certain things. If it works, why, why change it? And they, these absolutely work very well. They're very strong nozzles. Um, let's make sure all the screws are out. Okay. Well, headphone warning. Let's see if we can knock some screws out. Not. What has happened here is the screws might be stripped inside the lid. Yeah, I don't see a whole lot of threads left over there. That's what it is. Oh, yucko. Uh, and if you've seen a, uh, a uh, Mila 236 nozzle, this was the predecessor to that, in case you were wondering. So let's get this thing all cleaned out. Let me just bump the camera with my head too. Uh, cleaned off for a second. Aha. Uh -huh. And now, if I showed you this and showed you the inside of a Mila, you would not know the difference uh, unless you worked on these every day. So these uh, brushes are short. And I'll include a link to the description below because I bet you don't have a donor nozzle uh, on where to get one of these guys at a reasonable price, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to strip this nozzle. I actually uh, don't really care about the rest of it. Strip that. Oh, and there's a little filter right here. Yeah, he'll need to be changed. <laughs> he should be white. Uh, it's interesting the UV that the fluorescent light bulb gives off has discolored the plastic around it. They later would switch to a, a gray material inside these. So fluorescent light bulb. And uh, I'll show you the part number, but these are rather hard to come by, these fluorescent light bulbs these days. Um, 
So be careful with those. And then this is just intentionally knotted in here so that there is now enough room to take this apart. Looks like somebody made a ghetto repair. Look at that. Look at that, folks. That is, uh, oh, got the job done. Now, we're going to pull that out. And there's a little bridge. Give him a little help from a screwdriver. Boom. There we go. So that's up. Uh, Pull the motor and pull the micro switch and the neck. And you can see this has been seen better days, I'll tell you that. Um, show you what I'm talking about. Uh, if you see this white piece, that is part of this that's broken off. Well, you know what? We might just be saving the neck. Oh boy. You know how much I don't like seeing this sort of shit? This was a customer I insist on replacing this. <laughs> that just came right unsoldered. That's, uh, that was somebody. So I really, 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 really want this neck. <laughs> uh, is what I want out of this. Everything else is optional, and you can even see there's a hole where the pigtail would be on this. Um, so this is here. I'm going to set this aside. We might use this for something later, but I'm I'm kind of thinking that all this is probably not going to be used. Um, we might be converting one of the other ones in better condition. All right, so let's throw some powdered cascade in there. Like so. And I'm going to put a little bit in the pre wash. That's just because I'm still trying to clean all the gunk out of this dishwasher. And Power Scrub Plus. Come back to those parts later. Folks, well, I've got kind of a mess on my hands here. My bench is a mess. I got parts everywhere. So let's get this stuff back together and out of my hair. So I am just about done having this mess on my bench. Uh, I have probably six machines apart at the moment, and so I want to get this nozzle back together. Whichever one of these housings looks the best. Both about the same. Look. Make sure there's no cracks in either of these. I think this one's a little bit better. And you don't know I had three of these that we're going to make one good one out of, uh, hopefully. And this, you can flip these and it renews it. So we're going to do that. It's also about 95 degrees here right now where I'm at, so things are a little bit warm. more parts there uh, so when putting this back together I like to put a little bit of oil right there in the axles I find that that uh, alleviates any squeaking it just makes it move a little bit nicer um, let's see here that would be a Mila motor <laughs> again I have so many things uh, apart right now folks it's kind of hard Sort out what's what. What was in this particular one? I don't like this rust on this motor at all. This really uh, doesn't look good to me. It could be good, but it doesn't look good. Interesting the felt pieces there. So I'm actually going to transplant this assembly into there. Um, in case anybody's wondering, what is the heck I'm doing here? So, and you can see the fluorescent light bulb assembly is actually really easy to transplant. Uh, bam, um, almost done. Yeah. That's easy. And then 
Uh, that goes somewhere on the board. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. Um, so we are going to give this just a little bit of oil. Keep the grease in those bearings uh, wet and pliable. And that will move things up. Usually you don't put oil in ball bearings, but like I said, this stuff is pretty good for doing that purpose. All right, that frees everything up. Everything is much better with that. More better. <laughs> uh, so and you can see when you do this that there's a path here, the wires, and uh, I knew I cleaned one of these covers off for this. Everything pretty much will have its place here when we're done. Very interesting system vessel worked out for this. And then there's there's like what looks like a knotted wires on top. The reasoning for that is that's your slack to work with while you're working on this. So I put this in right. You'll notice that that gives me slack. I can now position everything how it was and get all that back together. Uh, the other thing, it's really easy to lose. I don't know why this has to be molded separately, but it is is the little red guy on the reset button of the board. So when you're putting the reset, when you're putting all this back, uh, just keep in mind that you wanna put that in right there. Um, and this guy right here, actually, it's been several weeks since I took this thing apart. Um, Damn, if I remember right, he actually goes in the other channel under this. Huh. How about that? Yep, he goes right there. I was wondering what the other wire was for. Again, everything is pretty much explained at some point when you look at the, the unit, how it goes together, where there's all these places for wires to sit nicely. And the Germans do a really good job just putting this together like that. So that sits in the path under there. That goes up there. And now we can put the motor back, but not, not screwing the motor in yet. And you see that that just sits in there. So now things are really starting to come together with this, how it's wired. And you have this, which has a path that sits in over there. So just make sure that's there in its path as well. And then what holds the yellow wires in place on this particular thing is this right here. When you do this, you want to make sure you tilt the head to the side what takes up the most slack so when you're wiring it in, you're not uh, overextending anything. And after that's there, you will see that this little board just kind of sits there on top, like so. Hope that's Again, all. Again, because I'm putting multiples of these things together, um, I'm kind of like picking the best parts out of three of them. So, there's a close-up of some wiring for you uh, in terms of how these are wired with the pigtail. Which I'll set over here. And that will get set down there. Back to our main project over here. That might give you an idea how you wire it. Uh, a direct connect right there. What's to what. Um, so hopefully that helps somebody out who decided to unplug all these. They are labeled on the board, but they're really small and hard to read. So just keep that in mind. 
get all that. And then because somebody was already in here and soldered something, I do have this extra piece of thing in the mine. That extra connection. Um, so that's how that gets wired. Now let's grab a belt on here and a brush roller right here. And you can see this one's kind of a little bit sorry. So what we're going to do is just real quick clean its edges up. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then I'm going to put some lubricant in here. Now, if it's really loud, you can put a little bit of grease in there as well. Um, but these ones, yeah, this brush roller is fairly new. Somebody replaced this brush roller already. So I'm going to put that. Oh, before I put the belt back, hope that's uh, all. Well, I seem to have misplaced my soap bar, so I'm just going to mention that I'm an example of why you should keep your workspace clean. I just got a new soap bar for doing that. Like I said, you just want to lightly soap the belt. It takes up a lot of noise. Um, and these ones, like I said, I think I have used bearings and a new roller. You can, just like I said before, just a tad bit of grease with that oil. You want to make sure that they're both Teflon based or both petrol based, you know. Uh, so you basically want the oil to melt the grease to create a thicker oil. Um, I would suspect if you had some differential oil laying around, uh, that might be better to use. And at this point, we're going to start putting some of the other pieces together. I've got all, all the screws mixed in over here because that's that's the way I roll. All right. So there's some things here that are very important when we put this together. Um, zoom in here a little bit. So these guys, super important in this thing. This was the filter that was here. Now, I have a little, I hate to say this cliche, life hack uh, with that. These filters, uh, they, they are made out of the same material that Mila uses. And if you're servicing Mila's, you always have these little cutoffs that don't fit anything. Um, I always save the cutoff material just to make these little filters. So, and you don't want to use felt, you want to use actual filter material. In this case, I even have German fil filter material. For the German powerhead. So that just sits there uh, like that and the motor breathes through there. So that's just a little tip uh, in terms of maintaining filters and little thing you can do there. Now if you don't have that material, uh, I guess you could try and wash that, but I doubt that will wash very well. So now we have the wedge, which it's like a Mila upright if you've ever worked on one of those. Um, actually, the whole the Mila upright was based on this sort of design. Uh, in fact, if I grab a Mila upright motor, I happen to have one, uh, I don't think you'd be able to tell those two apart <laughs> uh, if I didn't tell you. So, we'll keep that in mind there. And now, notice I'm not using a drill for this section. We want to use our hands. Before we tighten anything, you notice it's kind of loose. We want to put tension on that belt using the wedge and then tighten down. And it is easy to strip these screws or break this plastic motor holder, so keep that in mind. So the belt's nice and taut, all that. So we're going to start putting all this back together. And as you put this back together, you need to pull. We're out of frame here. You need to pull the wires that you made loose over here taut. Because this 
Otherwise, these fluorescent wires can get caught in this, and that is not a good time. As you put this in, just be careful. Don't hit it too much. Don't. And as you put the LEDs back in here, you notice this board shifted. And it's, it's something that happens on this nozzle. When they came out with the 228 or the 236 or the EBK340, they solved so many of these little uh, issues. They just kind of made this not so fun to work on sometimes. So as you excuse me, we're just going to put this little this sucker back how it was. Again, everything just gets very loose very easily and out of place um, when you do this. You can see the LEDs are in place now. Yep, the wire had to be taut. And I'm seeing that this isn't just sitting flush like this, which is a problem. So if that's just there's a gap there when you're putting this together, that means I need to pull the whole lid off and use these to help wedge it off. And yep, my wires have gotten out of place. And that's just something that happens with these. My circuit board secondary circuit board went out of place as well. So. so as we again put this back together everything is sitting much better, much nicer. Pull the slack out of that. That feels good now. So again, you really have to feel that uh, in order to know where it's going. And I've got three of these, let's see. That one's really worn. That's the least worn. Uh, and this, I just like to do very little grease. Because grease, you know, dust sticks to grease. But just very little grease on that. It's my personal opinion what should be done with that keep it from prematurely wearing and then give you an idea I'm just pulling parts from this uh, this there's a spring that goes under it right there and that spring interacts with this so you put this on yeah I'm fumbling here all right so there's your your lock I had extra trouble with mine because of the the repair that was done on this neck, whoever did that, I had to push an extra part out of the way that shouldn't be there. So we are going to put these two screws in. Again, I like to do these by hand. All right, so now this extra slack here, you're gonna see that there is a built-in place right here to put your extra slack. And now those wires just sit there like that. Now, you pick a starter. Got some starters here. These rarely go out, but they are interchangeable. And we got a fluorescent light. Uh, again, coming hard to come by these days, this particular bulb, but it is there. And you can see where it's been discolored from the UV light. Um, I also just like to wipe down this before putting it back together. A little Windex. Um, so now at this point, everything should sit on there and go back together. And you can see that the locking mechanism, you want to just test that and make sure that's working, which this one is. And now we are going to put everything else back. That's 15, I need a 10. Um, This particular uh, set of screws I have, because again, I was making one out of three. The older ones are Phillips, the newer ones are, are uh, T10s. So again, keep that in mind when you're putting, working on these. This one, we're just gonna put Phillips back in. So it's all the same around. Um, so you can use a screwdriver on these, hand do these. 
And we're going to set this to a lower torque setting. Yep, then you'll hear it like kind of pop and click as things get back and settled back into their place. Everything's a real nice tight fit on this. Alright, got that. And I do just like to put, again, a drop of oil on the wheels. Keep it from squeaking. This one's got the squeegee. So that is that. And now I'll clean the paint marks off. I've got a great tutorial on cleaning paint marks off on Patreon. So, and if you're not familiar with Patreon, Patreon is where folks can go uh, donate to help keep our channel running. Um, so, big help to them. I'll put whatever parts I can find on Amazon in the description as always to try and help out uh, anybody uh, repairing. I do recommend you bring it to a local shop if you can. Uh, I don't recommend you do this at home. So, please hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, uh, turn on that bell notifications, that helps a lot. And thanks for watching.